Good morning. Good morning. It's wonderful to see all of you here today as we gather to worship together. I just want to extend a welcome to all of those who are visiting for the first time, all of you who are joining online, whether that be in person right now on Zoom or those who will join later via YouTube. So wonderful to join together with you in whatever way we are worshiping together. And then just a reminder, in whatever way that you want to be a part of today's service, whether that be just being here and soaking it in and listening, or whether you want to sing out loud, whether you want to share something, all are welcome to participate in whatever way is most meaningful. Just want you to know today we have a very full service. It's an exciting one. Uh, we have pennies from heaven. We're welcoming Kathy as a new member today. Um, and then there will also be a mission moment that will be shared during today's sermon to inspire hope based on how Jesus utilizes us as a part of his story of radical love and care for all humanity. So it's a very exciting full service, and I'm so glad that each of you are here to be a part of it. And then at the conclusion of our service, again, you can place any of the cards that you fill out or your offerings in either of the baskets at the rear of the sanctuary, and then all are invited to join um, in the fellowship hall right around the, the corner here for our coffee hour. I invite you now to listen as Jean provides our call to worship. Hear these words from Psalm 68. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name, and be exultant before God. Parent of orphans and protector of widows is God. God gives the desolate a home to live in. God leads out the prisoners to prosperity and provides for the needy. Blessed be God who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Awesome is God. For God gives power and strength to God's people. Blessed be God. As we worship together this morning, let us lift our voices in song and praise to God, the one who provided, provides for all our needs. Following the ringing of the bell, we will stand together in body or in spirit to sing number 42 in the New Century Hymnal, over a thousand tongues to sing. But first, let us pause and listen to the ringing of the bell.
I invite you now to join together in our unison prayer. It's printed in the bulletin. Loving God, we rejoice in your presence. We sing praises in your name. As we worship together this hour, we pray that you will provide all that we need to sustain and sustain us through this day and the week ahead. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to be seated and turn into your Methodist hymnal to number 328. Surely the presence of the Lord, which we will sing twice. <laughs> soul when he came into contact with Benin Tugumi, just two years his senior and newly recruited as a heifer community facilitator. He joined one of the two youth development groups that Benin led to function part as saving circles. And that was the first thing that they did was teach these young people how to save their money and use it in a more economic way. The groups have grown, the, the groups are peer-led, and the structure aims to stimulate the entrepreneurship in rural communities, so young people become active agents of change in their own progress. 
a tenant of Heifer's sustainable locally led development approach, which is their approach for almost everything they do now. The, group, the youth groups have grown so large that they've had to split into two groups now in the area where this young man lives. This article, if you're interested in looking it up later at, on Heifer International or heifer.org, goes on to follow a couple of these youths and how it has helped them better their lives and all of those around them. So now I'm gonna come around with my little basket. <laughs> Please pray with me. Dear God, we are so thankful that we can use our quarters and pennies and dimes and nickels to help others all around the world. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite Kathy to come forward and the moderator team and also Holly, those will be a part of our new member service. This first reading is uh, a poem selected by Kathy, Footprints in the Sand by Mary Stevenson. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to, to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, he said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why. When I needed you most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never, ever, during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. We are so blessed and excited by this moment. By You've been so much a part of our church family already over this last year. And so it is with joy to officially welcome you today. And a part of doing that is, is this service. And so, it, yes, you are welcome. And thank you. Your presence has already been a blessing for us. Um, and today, as we go through this together, we read these commitments to each other, which is really important. 
I invite each of you, if you have not already taken out the insert in your bulletin, because you will have a part as well to read. Um, it's a really important thing within the United Church of Christ to make a covenant with one another. It is not just Kathy saying that I am choosing to be a part of this church. We, in response, are saying we are choosing to be your church family as well. And it's a covenant that we are making together to hold each other accountable, to journey with each other, and to celebrate life experiences and also to journey with each other when life experiences are challenging. And so I just invite you now to take out your insert if you haven't already and follow along or listen as we go through this together. Friends in Christ, we all are received into the church through our affirmation of faith. Kathy Trulson has found support and been nurtured in the midst of this community of faith. She has been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm her faith and to claim in our presence her covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. Kathy is here for service to the Holy One, using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. Hear these words from Scripture. You are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally members of the household of God, with Jesus alone being the cornerstone. And so this is the time when we read through these and I ask you the questions. This is your microphone so that they can hear you, but you can stand at whatever comfort you have. <laughs> Kathy, do you desire to enter into this community of faith? I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to follow in the way of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able. I promise with the help of God. And do you promise according to the grace given you to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the United Church of Cloverdale? celebrating God's presence, and furthering Jesus' mission in all the world. I promise with the help of God. Kathy, today we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. And together we celebrate your presence in this household of God. We celebrate your presence, your worth, and what you have to offer to us. Do you, Kathy, promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world? I promise with the help of God. And so I invite all of you at home those of you who are here, this is your time to also enter into covenant with Kathy. Let us, the members of the United Church of Cloverdale, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you, Kathy, with joy into the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the United Church of Cloverdale. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. And this is our song of covenant to you, so we just invite you to listen and I invite each of you to turn in your hymnals to in the New Century Hymnal to number 539 as we sing, Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant.
going to slide this way. I'm going to invite the moderator team to come on over by this microphone. Holly, you can come by this microphone. Okay. And together, let the moderator team and sponsors reading covenant to Kathy. Kathy. In the name of Jesus Christ, and on behalf of the United Church of Cloverdale, we extend to you our love and appreciation for all the ways you have already blessed us, and we welcome you as an official member of our church family. <clears throat> We appreciate you. We appreciate your friendly smile, your eagerness to serve, and your humble spirit. So we welcome you to the family of the United Church of Canada. Please have a member. Yes. Yeah. And we have a couple of other little speaking a couple of little other things for you. There's, this is a church cookbook that we put out <laughs> quite a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, Imagine a good person with <laughs> <laughs> people that submitted them. <laughs> it was quite a while. <laughs> and oh, my fingers got stuck. And then here's a lovely uh, oh, bloom. Bloom. It's getting ready to bloom. <laughs> it's heavy though, so maybe we'll have to set it down. Okay, I'll put it here. That's going to be really pretty. It's very special. And in celebration of this moment of Kathy officially joining our church family, let us let the whole community know our joy and celebration as we listen to the ringing of the bell. This reading was selected by Kathy. The poem is titled Guided Steps and the author is unknown. On virgin sands, the footsteps I tread show only now the life that I have led. No sign in front to show the path I'll take or those with greater courage I have yet to make. O oh, restless tide that turns incessantly, wipe from me the pain and help me now to see the footsteps that I planted were patterned by the past. Soon to be tide covered, I shall walk on at last. The way that lies ahead upon the sea washed sand, yet now unmarked, soon I will understand. The path not seen is marked upon the shore by the hand that governs and the eye which sees far more. I invite each of you to join in reading our prayer that will conclude this new member service. Eternal God, we praise you for calling us to serve as an extension of your all-inclusive love and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for sending Kathy to us so that together we may strive to care for and serve others. Confirm in us now the power of your covenant that we may live in your spirit, share regularly in worship, and so love each other that we may have among us the same mind 
which was in Christ Jesus, to whom all be honor and glory. Amen. Again, welcome. I invite you now to listen to this morning's scripture reading. It's from the book of Acts 1, verses 6 to 14, from the New Living Translation. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has a time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, God alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, Jesus was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. You of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into the heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of half a mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here are the names of those who were present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bethlehem, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and several other women, and the brother of Jesus. May Blake, God, may God bless our understanding of these words. I invite you to bow your heads for prayer. Oh God, I pray that you will speak through me. Help us to understand what you would have us to learn from this passage and the stories that we will share this morning. Thank you for the ways that you are present in our lives and you inspire hope. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In today's scripture reading, Jesus declared to his disciples, God alone has the authority to set those dates and times, but you will receive the Holy Spirit, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. Put another way, Jesus was describing how they could continue to carry forward his legacy and make a difference. 
even after he was gone and they could not comprehend God's timing or how the future would unfold. They were to be intentional about sharing personal stories based on their first-hand experiences of seeing the difference Jesus made in their own lives and also in the lives of others, including the ways that Jesus utilized them as a part of his story of radical love and care for all humanity. Can you imagine yourself in today's scripture reading? Perhaps at some point in your life you have pondered, here I am, facing an unknown future. And as much as I try to keep in view how God has provided and cared for me in the past, those memories seem to disappear into thin air as I try to comprehend what comes next. Has it ever happened to you? Ever had those, those kind of thoughts? Or maybe, how do I go about finding meaning and purpose for the next part of my life? And what, what do I even have to offer anymore, in general and to others on behalf of God? We all are on a life journey that brings change as we age and as we go through different things. How do we find meaning and purpose when we can't conceptualize what the future will look like or how it will unfold? How do we find our meaning and purpose? How can we represent Jesus' radical love when we don't even know and can't even do the things that we used to be able to do? We long to do them, but sometimes our body just doesn't quite have that same energy that it used to. Last week I introduced naturalist and activist Jane Goodall's emphasis that ultimately we each can effectively inspire hope by sharing personal stories. And so with this in mind, how might we answer the question, what do I have to offer at this point in my life? When the future is unknown and our physical abilities cannot keep up with what we wish we could still accomplish, we still have our stories. Stories that remind us that even though we cannot physically see Jesus in our midst, that God still gives us power through the Holy Spirit to accomplish God's plan and vision for our future. Stories that remind us that even when we do not understand the timing or the details as we journey through life, when we prayerfully entrusted our future to God, the next steps and resources were provided by God in a variety of ways. And we still have our stories that we can share, stories that remind us that we still have value and something to offer others and to God, no matter where we find ourselves along life's journey. We still have our stories. Some of the stories we share represent our individual life experiences, and others are stories that recount, that recount our collective experience as a church family. 
Today, we are blessed to have one of each of these kind of stories. As an extension of her new member service, our first story comes from Kathy. Kathy deeply values having found a spiritual home here at United Church where she can be her authentic self. She has asked me to share on her behalf a glimpse of her spiritual journey, utilizing two brief excerpts she selected from a devotional entitled, My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers, which in these excerpts resonate deeply with her personal experience and help her to articulate how God's work is never done in our lives and how God is helping her along life's path, especially now as she navigates finding meaning in the second half of her life. It is an honor for me to read the following on her behalf. The first excerpt reads as follows. Every God-given vision will become real if we will only have patience. God is never in a hurry, yet we are always in such a frantic hurry. And while still in the light of the glory of the vision, we go right out to do things even though the vision is not yet real in us. But thankfully, even if we do not recognize it in the midst of our haste, ever since God gave us the vision, God has been at work on our behalf, getting us into the shape of the goal God has for us. The vision that God gives is not some unattainable castle in the sky, but a vision of what God wants us to be down here. If we are willing to trust God with the timing and the process, then as surely as God is God and you are you, you will turn out as an exact likeness of God's vision. This first excerpt concludes by encouraging, don't lose heart with the process. Even when we are in a hurry, God is not, and God is working on our behalf in God's timing. The second excerpt shared by Kathy reads as follows. The decision to serve the Lord is not an impulsive action, but a deliberate commitment. We tend to say, but God could never have called me to this. I am not worthy. In fact, I'm too unworthy. It can't mean me. But Chambers writes, but it does mean you, and the more weak and feeble you are, the better. For the person who is still relying and trusting in anything within themselves is the last person to even come close to saying, I will serve the Lord. In the conclusion of this excerpt, Chambers writes, no wonder Jesus placed such an emphasis on the sin of unbelief. If we really believe that God meant what God said, just imagine what we would be like. Do we really dare to let God be to us all that God says God will be.
do we dare? Hear now these words that Kathy wrote about how these two excerpts relate to her spiritual journey. Kathy writes, I chose these words from my favorite devotional because they speak to my recent struggle with identity. I cherished raising my kids, loving on the grandkids, and being available and needed by them. I also cherished my 24 years of marriage with Mark, my second husband. We had unconditional acceptance and mutual respect. And although we had many struggles with a blended family, we also had perseverance. Now, I'm 2,000 miles away from the grandkids in Indiana and 8,000 miles from the ones in Nepal. My husband, Mark, has died and I recently retired after 45 years as a woman's health nurse practitioner, during which I found great rewards in sharing time and trying to make a difference in the lives of some remarkable women. And I can imagine that you made a big difference in their lives. And now Kathy asks, or Kathy says, I'm not sure what God has in store for me. Kathy writes, the passages I chose from this devotional speak of our openness and willingness or our lack thereof to become what God has in mind for us. And because this relates, she says, to my desire to find meaning in the second half of life, for me, spirituality is of the utmost importance. I pray that my faith journey will be enhanced and glorified by becoming a part of this congregation. And Kathy adds, what a beautiful, loving, and accepting group of God's people we are. I conclude this first story by sharing the following that Kathy wrote about why she selected the poem Footprints in the Sand to be a part of her new member service. The poem Footprints has always been meaningful to me, says Kathy. Because of some family dynamics, I feel that an insecurity existed even in my young years. I was jealous of two girls in grade school, not because of looks, not because of money or popularity. Rather, even then, I realized that they carried themselves with more confidence than I did. I held that against them or felt like I was lesser for some reason. Kathy continues by sharing, I had a framed picture of footprints over my son's beds, which they recall even now 35 to 40 years later. Kathy acknowledges, I still carry a bit of doubt. Although I know God loves me and carries me, it is not a doubt that God is here with me, but a doubt that I am as deserving as others. My ex-husband instilled some of that doubt and criticized me many times as I took off for church with my two boys. Kathy concludes by sharing, Footprints reminds me that God is only an arm length away even during the worst of times. And she adds, he's actually closer than that, but that's where he is when I'm not bringing him into my heart 100%. And Kathy concludes by saying, I feel
feel his presence. And I know he saves me daily from myself and my shortcomings. Kathy, thank you for sharing your authentic self with us. We are honored to hold that and to journey with you and to celebrate that. Thank you for inspiring us by sharing that. I invite Levon to come forward now to share our second story this morning that reflects our collective experience of God, how God has and continues to utilize us as a part of Jesus's ongoing story of radical love and care for all humanity. So, Pedal to Resettle is coming up um, in a month, slightly less than a month. <laughs> and we put together some slides just showing World Relief and some of the refugees that they have helped. For those of you who don't know, World Relief is a huge organization that resettles refugees in the United States. And the group we're working with is from Sacramento. And so they brought a lot of people to Northern California. And Pedal to Resettle is their largest fundraiser. And if you check your bulletin, there's a little write-up about that and how you can either join the team or um, support the team. But I want to tell you a little story about a family that um, we, some of us were fortunate enough to meet. Many years ago, Jim and I, Bob, Tim, Jean, and Polly went to Sacramento to pick up a refugee family. Hmm. They arrived from Kabul. They had been underway for, I don't know, two days, three days. And when they got off the plane, I mean, it had been a really long trip, and they were just all so excited and <laughs> full of life, and, and I would have been dead. But anyhow, um, the kids all spoke English, and the father did, because he had worked with the U.S. military, and the mother didn't. And each refugee was entitled to bring two suitcases, two. So this was a family of five. We went with them to the luggage carousel. Eight pieces of luggage arrived. That means 20% of their worldly goods were lost. I went with them to baggage claim, and we talked to the fellow there. And I was getting pretty aggravated. <laughs> but finally, the, the husband put his hand on my shoulder, and he said, it's OK. I have everything. He looked at his family. And then, as we walked them to the car to drive them to the host, host family, I felt something nudging me. It was the one. She grabbed my hand and was hanging on for dear life. And so, we, we helped these people um, through our donations and your generosity. And our church has been involved for many years. We've donated things to World Relief, um, household goods, uh, sanitary requirements. We've helped set up an apartment. And it's, it's just been tremendous fun. So, Even have served lunch to the bicyclists who are participating in Pedal to Resettle. This year, not one of us is riding a bike. Instead, six of us have come up with individual challenges, things that we will accomplish in the month of June. Two of us are swimming, um, three are walking with pets, <laughs> and I'm not quite sure what the other two folks are doing. They're from the um, Good Shepherds Church. They've joined with us in this endeavor. So these are some of the riders that came through the Pedal to 
settle the first year. The second year, we served the lunch. They pulled in. We were at a church in Bodega Bay in their parking lot. These guys pulled in and they yelled, is this the United Church of Cloverdale? <laughs> and I said, well, actually, it's that I named the church we were at. And they said, no, 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 you guys. We love you guys. <laughs> so here's our team from, I think, three years ago. And what Richard did that year was he surfed. He caught, I, I don't know how many waves. He called it waves of welcome. <laughs> Jim and I have named our effort Paddle to Resettle. Um, I don't think the other people have come up yet with a name for what it is going to be. But anyhow, um, I think I just keep thinking back to this family that they lost so much, and yet they, they were so brave and trusting as they came here. They were plunging into a completely unknown situation, and they said, We have all we need. Thank you, Ohan. Indeed, there are so many ways that we can continue the story of ways that we extend Jesus' radical welcome and unconditional love for all humanity and inspire hope. I invite you to turn now to number 581 in the United Methodist Hymnal and join in singing our hymn of response, Lord Who's Love Through Humble Service. Thank you. 
feedback from um, the British Isles, and um, also we timed it so that my brother and his wife Gretchen, Fred and Gretchen, from Florida could come and visit. So we had a wonderful weekend together. It's been way too long that we've been apart. So, joy. It is a joy. Well, I'm so glad that you're both here with us today, and that all of you made it back safely and, and are here back. And Maggie got COVID from the trip, but not you. Not me. That was the end I had it. That was, that was a blessing. <laughs> all of that, we join in saying thanks be to God. Are there any other joys or concerns this morning? I would like to share, last week we prayed for my best friend Kelly's um, dad who had surgery to remove a tumor from his brain stem uh, that occurred um, successfully. You were able to remove it and he's hopefully coming home tomorrow. You know, it'll be along uh, some rehab and, and whatnot and other tumors that I'll have to address, but that's good news. And so I just, um, just join me in saying thanks be thanks to God. God. Um, I first would like to ask continued prayers for Ukraine. Um, Bakhmut has been hit pretty hard, and there's not a lot left in some of those eastern cities right now. Um, and uh, just pray for the for the country and the people. Continue prayers for that. Amen. And we join you in that, and we say, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Um, and second, I like. Uh, Richard and I would like to ask prayers for Aaron and his family. You can hear a little dark there right now. So prayers for that some light may come in somewhere to shine for them. And we join you in saying, Lord, Lord hear our prayers. prayers. But I have one more. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I saw the orthopedist on Friday and the x-rays on my niece, as you all know from the way I hobble, <laughs> um, severe arthritis in both knees with bone on bone in my right knee and not quite bone on bone in my left knee. So uh, I'm hoping to have, uh, the recommendation was a partial replacement on my right knee and a full replacement on my left. And I'm, hope, I'm hoping to get the partial replacement done in August. So prayers that I get through this period of getting, doing the show and all this other stuff I need to get done before I can look at um, the improvement of my body. Um, just prayers <laughs> to get through the next few months. You can count on that and we join you in saying, Lord, hear our prayers. Anyone else this morning? Any other joys? First, I want to thank everybody for welcoming me. This is the greatest joy. But um, prayers for my son and his wife, Brittany and Tori, and the three kids because they're traveling to the States from Nepal in about three weeks. And if we can help them to get three little kids, including a new baby here, and traveling from Seattle to spend some time in the Midwest in three different states, it's going to be a real challenge to stay well. So prayers that they'll, they'll make it and they'll be able to catch up. We join you in saying, Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. Anyone else this morning? I invite you to just take a few moments of silent reflection to pray in your own words anything that you or not quite ready to share out loud or just would prefer to pray silently. I invite you to do that and then I will lead us in our um, congregational prayer and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Holy One, we are so grateful that we can bring all of our joys and concerns to you. 
and we trust those spoken out loud and those that are silently on our hearts and minds to you. We pray that, like the early disciples, that you will help us to approach our decisions by seeking your guidance through prayer. Lead us forward and help us to create stories of a community where love, acceptance, and mutuality are expressed, where joy abounds and where results are achieved because we are all working hand in hand together as we strive to follow Jesus' teachings and example. Open the windows of our hearts and minds to the world and its needs. Use our very gifts and strengthen and give us courage in moments when we feel inadequate for the task at hand. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 77 in the United Methodist Hymnal. This hymn, How Great Thou Art, was selected by Kathy to be included on this very special day on which she has officially become a member of the United Church of Cloverdale. And just to briefly want to share, Kathy wrote the following about why she chose this hymn. And this is what Kathy wrote. I've always been a nature child, embracing God's handiwork long before I gained a deeper love and appreciation for his gifts and power. This song touches me in so many ways. It moves us from the wonder of the physical world to the ultimate gift of his sacrifice. The closing, which brings us home to him, sums up everything, our trials, grieving, and struggles, and how they'll all melt away one day. I invite you to stand now in body or in spirit and join in singing our closing hymn, How Great Thou Art.
to have been with each of you today and, and to celebrate and be here as Kathy has joined us officially as a member today and also as we've shared stories. As you go into the week ahead, continue to look for stories of where God is making a difference in your life. Share with each other, encourage each other. It is something that we continue to have the ability to do. Remind you that we have the baskets waiting for whatever you have to place in it at the conclusion of our service. Join us for coffee hour. Let Kathy know an official welcome from you as well in person and talk amongst each other. And then also we have our council meeting that will um, start shortly. I invite you to bow your heads for our closing blessing. Oh God, as we leave from this time in worship today, we ask that you bless all the offerings and gifts that we give in gratitude for all that you have done for us in the past, for how you have inspired and renewed our spirits during this hour, and in anticipation of the ways that we will experience your presence and help in the, weeks in the week ahead, experiences that will give us new stories of hope to share. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much.